be a part. We will have a bake sale, so we need bakers. We have a craft sale, so if you have any handicrafts you'd like to donate. We have wreaths that are being made. We have at least 30, I hear, and uh, possibly more, and they will be coming in, trickling in even before the sale, so if you want to buy them early, I think that's going to be available. And of course, the holiday decor. So if you uh, have any holiday decor that you would like to trade out and donate some to the cause, we will be accepting donations until, uh, Jean, do you have a time, a cutoff time for donation acceptance? No, we'll take anything, anytime. All right. Anything, anytime before the sale. It will help if you have a price in mind, especially if it is your own handicraft, because you know better than any of us the time and material that goes into such great gifts. So uh, that is a wonderful way to help the volunteers. If you are looking to volunteer or donate anything special and you have any questions, please call the church office, talk to me, or reach out to Jean. She is organizing this year. And we give thanks to all of our volunteers and helpers, and we plead for more. We definitely need more hands on deck. Tuesday morning, the 26th, we will start getting everything out. Uh, 10 o'clock, uh, Wednesday morning also, the 27th, not this week, next week. We can use all hands on deck. Thank you. Thank you. And our last event that I want to highlight is our Totem Fest. This happens the first Sunday in November, so it's going to be November 7th this year. If you have a loved one who has passed away in the last 12 months, please let us know. We would like to include them in the service and in the ring of the tolls. Uh, it does help me a lot if you send it to me in a text message or an email simply so we make sure that I have the spelling correct. And I will probably call to make sure I have the pronunciation correct as well. So if you can help us in that way, we would immensely appreciate it. And we look forward to honoring your loved ones together. Are there any other special announcements? Please remember that every second Sunday of every month we do gather as a church community for a meal. We invite people to take part. So that means November 14th, we will have turkey. So please put it on your calendar and plan to come. We, we love to have fellowship together. And the turkey is here. So, and there's a lot of it. So you, you better come and help, I guess. But we look forward to that fellowship as well. With that, let us take time to center our hearts and minds and bring us to a space of worship as we join together in our opening hymn, You Servants of God. <laughs>
worship, we recognize that there is much which we carry. For all that we carry today into this space, may we name it in our hearts and take it to God. Whether it is a prayer of concern and sorrow, or a prayer of joy and celebration, may we surrender all to God, so that God's will may be done, and we may be empowered to go forth renewed. Let us pray. Gracious and wondrous God, we thank you for the many gifts you have showered upon us. The gifts that fill our hearts with joy and bring us to offer you our praise. May we help to recognize these good gifts from you. May you plant them in our hearts in forms of praise so that we might find within us a generous spirit to go and share. For our prayers of sorrow and anxiety, gracious God, may you bring to us your blessed mercy and your comforting compassion. May we know your presence in our deepest valleys and walk with you in strength. We lift all these prayers as your Son teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um.
Let us join together and say what we believe. Today we bring our faith in one voice as we recite the Apostles' Creed in the alternative version. I believe in God, the Father, Mother, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only child, our Sovereign, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried, having ascended to the dead, and having risen on the third day, Christ ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father and Mother, and from there will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Our next scripture is from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 7, and 34 through 41. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words about knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Tell me if you have... Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Or what were its faces sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightning so that they may go and say to you, Here we are. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts, or given understanding to the mind? Who has wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions? when they crouch in their dens, or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey, when its young ones pray, cry to God, and wonder about the lack of food? And finally, our Gospel verse from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that you will that I am baptized with. They replied, We are able. But Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants. But it's not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Dear Lord, thank you for being with us this morning. Let your word work in your heart, in our hearts and minds, all to your glory. Amen. I have a love-hate relationship with our scripture from Job today. to wish yourself out of existence, 
to wish you'd never been born, and to call upon the Creator. And the Creator says, you were not only born, but all these other things happened as well. And for you to try to disown this creation is an insult to your divine. God goes into talking about all of these other wondrous things that God does. When you're having a good day, you can sit and be pleased by these gifts. But when you're having a bad day, there is this moment where we all say, yes, but what about me? Job calls on God to notice. Calls on God to recognize the pain and the sorrow in which he has suffered. This God who has been good to him and blessed him throughout his life seems to have abandoned him. And when God shows up again, Job is probably hoping for a blessing, for compassion and kindness. And what Job gets is a, well, where were you? Why do you think you're so great that you should have anything beyond what any other human has? You have good luck and you have bad. You have blessings and you have moments of sorrow. Life is a series of valleys and mountains and God created valleys and mountains. So that we might sit in the wonder of the works of our divine. But sometimes that just doesn't satisfy a broken heart. We know that when we call upon God, there is a very possible chance that the answer is going to be no. Because while this seems like a harsh answer that Job receives, the truth is, is that God has answers beyond any comprehension we will ever have. And this life is fleeting in comparison to the kingdom of heaven and life to come that we will one day meet. And so one day, even the largest heartaches might seem like small grains in a vast ocean. God sees all and knows all and knows that there is a future for Job in this life and the next. And so Job's sorrows and concerns are not worth recreating creation. But yet used as a way for Job to grow and strengthen, increasing in faith and going forth and sharing with others. It is a painful and terrible lesson to have to learn as a finite human that sometimes we have to go through these valleys in order to better understand and celebrate the mountaintops. James and John go to Jesus and ask Jesus to have this great experience with the divine, to be a part of ministry. They think it will bring fame and legacy. They have all these ideas of things that will happen in this life that could be wonderful blessings upon them and all that they know. But Jesus knows a deeper truth. Jesus knows that to be called into ministry in this life means to be called into heartbreak and sorrow. Jesus knows that he has been called to serve the people in order to fully live as one of us. It is not a sheltered or protected life. It is a life that experiences all. 
and surrenders all. So often we think that the greatest thing that we can achieve is power, power over our own lives, to be able to say, I am in control of this situation and I have a plan. And yet every time we think we do that, God comes along and mucks it up. James and John have this plan, and it might even come from a truly wonderful space, but they don't know what they're asking for. Job had a plan for his life, and it was taken from him. And so the next thing that he can think of, the only plan he can make is to say, God, just go back in time and take away my own creation. But God has other plans for us all. Sometimes the plan is not one that we appreciate or necessarily want, but God's will be done. Sometimes the plan isn't actually one that's going to be met here on earth. Perhaps there is a plan for redemption in heaven. But God's will be done. God's plans are greater than all we know. All we will ever experience. And so we are called to be humble. Not as a form of punishment, but as a form of growth in faith. We call upon God and ask for many wondrous things, and no prayer should be withheld. If it is in our hearts, then you might as well share it, but recognize that the answers may not be what we are expecting what we are ready to listen to or ready to follow. God speaks out of the whirlwind. God appears to people in so many ways. Sometimes it is in a still, small voice. Sometimes it is in a burning bush or a cloud. And sometimes it is in the chaos of a whirlwind. But we only hear when we surrender. When we ask God to make us a part of a ministry and God says, yes, go forth and feed my sheep. And at one time, the disciples say, oh, but God, Jesus, when did we see you? And Jesus says, oh, when I was hungry and when I was naked and when I was in prison. Go forth and feed my sheep. But God, who are your sheep? And God says, the widows and the orphans, the ones who are outcasts in society and have no means to make a way. The ones who have lost their support systems. The ones who may not understand you and may find you to be part of their problem, you are called. The disciples ask Jesus, what is it that you want from us? How can we do things for you? We will do whatever you ask. Too often we think that faith means security in this life. But faith is not about this life. Faith is about the next. It is about acting out what we know to be the kingdom of heaven on this plane, on this existence. It is acknowledging the gift of our own creation and the way that we have been placed on this earth to be a part of this beautiful symphony. We may be one simple note, a 
and we may not have a vision of all that is to come, but we recognize that we were intentionally made. And God will not revoke it. We recognize, too, that we call upon God to make us these servants, and we try to prepare ourselves to surrender and continually find that there are places we are not ready to go. But God continues to call. When I was in seminary, we would talk about calling upon the Holy Spirit when in worship or in prayer. And now the Holy Spirit tends to be that persona of God who is the embodiment of chaos itself. It comes on the wind. It rests in the breath of body. And yet, it cannot be contained. This Holy Spirit is chaotic and strange and beyond our understanding, and yet when we call upon it and it comes, we continue to be shocked. May the innocence of God's shocking Holy Spirit be something we can meet with wonder and joy. May we find a way to greet the whirlwinds in our lives, recognizing the ways in which God might be speaking to us in difficult times and guiding us through on paths we may have never imagined. We may not know the plan of God, and it may seem to have no sense to us in this moment or the next, but we rest in the reassurance that God is our Creator, who loves all, and doesn't create waste, but creates beauty and intention. May we go forth and live it out. May we embody that Holy Spirit that might well lead us into chaos, but will also lead us into peace. May the Lord be with you. One of our spiritual practices at St. John's that we do through every worship service is our time of offering. It is our opportunity to give thanks to God through tangible means, whether it is a financial gift, a plan to offer our time and talents, or a raising of special prayers. This week, we invite you to give as you are able with generosity to Neighbors in Need, which is one of our special 5 for 5 offerings in the United Church of Christ. It specifically helps different community projects throughout the United States, and is a collaboration often with other denominations in order to make every dollar reach farther. We invite you to also lift in prayer the projects in which Neighbors in Need continues to fund and will fund in the future. May each project be blessed with God's presence and wisdom, and all those who work to enact it find that they are cared for by their church so that they can care for others. Let us give as generously as we are able. If you would like to give to St. John's General Fund, we invite you to do so through our donation box as you exit the building, or by giving online at stjohns401.org. We also accept snail mail donations to our PO box. Please give as generously as you are able. And let us pray for all those who do 
not have much to give. Let us bring off. Thank you. 